Today we're going to be talking about carrying on our theme. It is day 21. So we're going to be talking today about how to bring this wonderful little matchbook thing that we have been working on for the last few days, how to bring it and connect it with the book that we're making, with our altered book. And, you know, we've got some um, stenciling in here, and we've got some light blue colorways and some navy blue colorways. So I think this, is, this page was a good one to open to. This is exactly what I'm going to concentrate on doing in here, because we do have some yellow and rusty pages in here, and we've got that taken care of just by the wonderful set of scrapbooking papers that we had that have these rusts and yellows and kind of fall colors in here. So we're gonna add some of our blues in today and just make it all kind of gel together. So I did, let me show you this a little bit. I have, I spent some time yesterday put that in there. Spent some time yesterday flushing out this wonderful little insides. We made our little library pocket yesterday and I added some other little pieces in here. There's a cute little pocket there. So we've learned how to do pockets a couple of different ways and envelopes. And these we're just taking some of the elements and folding them and aging the edges and attaching some of our little notes to the back which were aged. Uh, you saw me put this on here. So we're going to finish putting some of the elements on there and we are going to stencil some of our stencil and paint some of our little blue in here. So let me get this on our palette which is a foam plate, my favorite palette. So many uses for that. And this is, again, a navy blue and a French blue color. And let's just decide what elements we are going to stencil on. And you know we used this stencil before, which is a nice little floral design. So we're gonna be using some parts of that in our little segment today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is maybe come in here and take these two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on there. And I am just, I just want a hint of the stenciling. So again, you load your brush by dipping it straight down in the paint and making at least three puddles that are twice as big as the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna make a fourth one just because I don't want, don't want too much paint to seep under here. So I am just gonna come randomly do some little areas here. Not overthinking it. I don't want to cover up much. I just want it light. Just want a hint of that on there. And I think that does pretty well. Let me hold this up close. See how that's just a hint of the design? And if you, if you load your brush the way I told you, the way I just showed you how to do, then this dries almost immediately. See, there's no smearing or, or to that because it is already dry. Yay! So let me put these back and let me see where else I might want to put some of that. I think maybe right under there might be a little good place to just put a hint. And I am dabbing at this. I'm not swirling this time, although you can swirl. Okay, that gives a little bit more. 
It's all about continuity for me when I am making a book. I want it to be, I want it to feel the same because when you're flipping the pages, if you make one page purple and another green and another yellow and one's got flowers and another one's got uh, steampunk, you kind of confuse your audience there. So I want it to always be cohesive is the best term I can come up with. I want it to flow nicely as you're turning the pages. I want the front of the book to relate to the back of the book to relate to the middle of the book. And I also want the little pull-out parts because there's going to be lots of pull-out and interactive parts that are going to engage the reader. There's definitely a place that we need to do some of our design. So let's see what I want to do. I think that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, that is cool. So you see how I'm just bringing hints of it. It's not a whole bunch. We're not going over the top. But you can go over the top if that's what you want to do. This is yours. This is your book. This is your thing. So I am also going to take, because there's still a little bit of nice little color on my brush, I'm just going to come in here and brush some of that blue color around on some of my little pieces. And that also brings in another component, but it also brings that blue. Isn't that cool? Look how pretty that turned out. So just a hint. That kind of brings our like French blue color in without, without even thinking about it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm loving the way that looks. I'm going to do some on this side of this little book. Just bring some of that light blue in there and maybe a little bit inside. So you can see that loading this brush and offloading it like I did, that there is still, this paint is going a long, long way, isn't it? And I think I might just add a hair on here. Just a hint, just a little hint of those colors. All right, so let's add a couple of more elements. I think that could use just a little bit of blue right in there. And this one might add some. And I kind of had this figured out yesterday and I've kind of forgotten what I want to do. I think this element is going to go here to counter that one. So let me go ahead and attach it. I just, I love putting these puzzles together, don't you? Don't you just like the randomness, but how it all comes together and just makes a lovely design when you're finished. And I think that happens when you use one of these colorways of the scrapbook papers. I really had not done a lot of that. I have always kind of designed my own elements, which I'm going to start doing for you guys sometime shortly. I promise I'm going to do that. So I think I want to put this down here and then I'm going to put this little round that I cut out. And I still think I should have enough blue on there to be able to give a hint of blue. I do. And I may end up doing something else with that. But it says once upon a time on there. So I loved that. So I think I'm just going to glue that down and make another little pocket. Just put some right around the edge here. Hopefully, I don't get too far in and carried away. I can certainly get carried away, as you well know. And what I want to show you is how I am going to tie this together or fasten it together. Because when it folds up, 
It's going to be quite thick now. And it won't stay down, so I want to take some ribbon and tie around there. So let me cut that piece. I'm going to show you my trick for this. Let me double check the tie of it. Let me go ahead and tie it with these little fingers. That's pretty good, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over top of my ribbon. So that's how I fix my ribbon on there. And that's how I hide that I have glued it on there. So once upon a time, that's the way it opens. So I'm gonna put that in this direction. So I'm gonna put a little glue under my ribbon, just a tad. And then I am going to glue this over top. And that hides any of my structure. <laughs> Any of the, that's the good thing about making books, is you want to hide the way you made them. You don't want your audience to be able to see all those intricate little things that you did. You want to kind of like magic, kind of let them wonder, how did she do that? So I think that's pretty good. I hope this makes sense to you. I always hide the ribbon. I love ribbons in my work, but I always want to hide them. So I think that's pretty neat. I hope you think so too. And I hope my audience will think so. Is, can you imagine 21 days, three weeks? I am so excited about this, and I'm loving every minute of it. So anyway, enough about me. This is all about you, and I hope I'm encouraging your creativity, and my creativity is becoming contagious to you. I hope. So anyway, I will be back tomorrow, and until we meet again, may joy be with you all.